All right, y'all. Hello. It is Friday. So let's just have some fun on a Friday. That's what I like doing. Kick off the weekend with some maps. It's been a little bit since we took a look at these. These are going to be maps of Europe, and uh, these are always pretty fun, in my opinion. So let's get straight into this. All right, so first map, we have a one-bedroom apartment average rent price per month in the city center of the capital. This is 2021, so three years or so. Maybe these prices have gone up uh, slightly, I would guess. And uh, these prices are in euros now, quite obvious that, yes, different places will have different prices, of course, but some of these are pretty stark differences, right? When we look at places like Ireland, the UK, France, Denmark, uh, the Netherlands, right? These are pretty pricey, especially when you consider, you know, like Eastern Europe, especially down south here. Look at how cheap some of these are. 420 euros, 385, 245 that's crazy to me. I knew these would be different, but that's a hell of a difference. Like, look at how expensive. 2000 a month average for the UK. That is very pricey. Now, I know a lot more goes into this, of course. Uh, you know, jobs, cost of living, average salary, you know, all these things, right? But it is pretty crazy when you see it just kind of marked out how expensive or how you know, cheap some countries may appear. <laughs> uh, I believe the 190 looks like it's the cheapest. That's... Uh, is this Turkey down here? Jeez, 190. That is actually insane how cheap that is. Whoa. Is it a crime to knock on a door and run away? Otherwise known as the ding dong ditch here in the U.S. at least. <laughs> I uh, wasn't a fan of these. I didn't really do this when I was a kid, but I knew people that did. Very random map too. Apparently you, you can totally get away with this. It's not a crime. And basically 90% of Europe, it looks like. Uh, but don't try it in the UK. I guess since 1839, this is illegal. I wonder what it is. If it's like a, um, maybe like a fine, you know, I doubt it's something crazy like jail time. That, that would be a little wild, right? Average age women get married. This is a course from a couple years ago. Now, this varies a lot more than I would have thought as well. This shows kind of how diverse Europe is and also how big it is. Um, I think, at least from an American perspective, we tend to think it's a lot smaller than it really is. Uh, it's actually pretty big. And not to mention, you know, population-wise, it's way bigger. And uh, of that population, you know, Europe is extremely uh, different and diverse, all right? So many different countries and cultures, uh, vastly different in a short amount of distance. So uh, anyway, look at like some countries, like look at Sweden, Ireland, 33 and a half to 35 years old, getting married. That's pretty late, at least in my opinion. Right? I know it's different for everyone, but that does seem a little bit on the higher end of like your first time getting married. Uh, for reference, I don't even know what the American average is, but you know, me, I got married. It was before my birthday that year, so I think I was 25. Uh, I was 25 when I got married, which kind of aligns with far kind of east here, right? Like Ukraine, Russia, Turkey, kind of these more aligned with these countries. So yeah, this is kind of fascinating. Do you think, uh, do you agree with this map? Was this kind of true for you relative to where you're from? You'll have to let me know. Uh, I feel like this is probably the safe zone, like where most people would fall is late 20s, right? I feel like that's reasonable in most places, maybe around 30. And of course that does uh, kind of fall in line with most or the like the bulk of Europe right here. Now keep it in line with the age kind of stuff. What age do Europeans leave the parents' house on average? Now, this is kind of funny as well. A lot different. Uh, first of all, what is Sweden doing here? I hope this is Sweden, right? I have that right, yeah. 17 and a half? Damn, y'all are leaving home early. <laughs> I mean, that happens here too, but I would say here it's usually around 20, yeah, right? 19, 20, 21 maybe. Um, that was kind of the case for me was around 19 or 20. Uh, but I'd say, at least compared to what I've seen, uh, people I know and stuff here in the U.S., a lot of Europe seems to leave their parents' house pretty late. I mean, look, at we have some 33s, 32s. Uh, that's mind-blowing to me because I'm 31, and if I was like the average uh, person from some of these countries down here, 
I would still be living at home. I can't even believe that. I think of how like crazy, like long of a life I've had on my own, essentially, right? Like not living at my parents' house. Uh, that's pretty mind blowing to think that someone could still be living at home at 33. <laughs> air quality map. Take a look at this. Obviously, the lighter colors are cleaner air, and then like the reds and oranges are, um, you know, more polluted air. Essentially, you know, I kind of find it no surprise that way up here in you know like Scandinavia, uh, you know, northern Russia, Finland, these kind of places up here, uh, even actually Ireland and like. Scotland. The air looks to be extremely clean, right? That makes sense. When I see pictures of Norway or Sweden, yeah, it looks very just clean and mountainous and beautiful, right? And I can imagine that air just being so fresh. Now, there must be something going on, especially like here, like northern Italy seems really dirty or polluted right here. Same with like the Netherlands, Belgium, uh, this whole coastal area right here, and then even southern England as well. Uh, there's definitely something going on there. Maybe a lot of industry and factories. I I'm not really sure. Now, this one's hilarious. This is different hats of Europe, and I've never seen a map like this. This is actually kind of funny. Uh, we even have way down here, like not Europe included. <laughs> we have like parts of Asia and the African continent here. But anyway, yeah, take a look at that. Is this accurate, right? Got to let me know if you wear some of these hats and if it falls in line with what you're supposed to be wearing supposedly from your country. It's funny, it's it's like cool to see, and at the same time, pretty much all of these are not what you would see over here in the US. Over here, you would see, of course, like a baseball style cap, right? I think we've all seen them. Uh, like a trucker cap, which is basically a different form of a baseball cap uh, or hat. And then of course, think of the Westerns, right? Like a cowboy hat. That's pretty much what you'd see here. If you see a ski mask, it's usually for a bad reason here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, I suppose when it's really cold, we might wear some of these wintery style hats up here. But uh, that's about it. Definitely not rocking any of these hats basically anywhere here in Western Europe and Central Europe. Um, yeah, you don't see those here too often. Now, this one's really interesting. I don't know if this is accurate or not. You're going to have to let me know as well what you think of this. This is a how you sneeze map. And I guess I never, ever, ever thought about this. Does the sound you make when you sneeze have anything to do with the language you speak? That's the vibe I'm getting from looking at this map. Because as you can see, some of these sneezing noises look different, of course, depending on the country and depending on the language. You know, obviously there's a lot of different languages going on over here compared to, let's say, the UK, which would, of course, be the language I'm associated with, English. That that would be my native language, the, the one I know best. And sure enough, I pretty much make an achu noise. Like, I don't literally say that, but that's just what ends up sounding like. If I sneeze really hard, you're going to hear that kind of verbal sound, right? Uh, so that does line up, and I think that's hilarious and now it's got to be thinking, are these accurate as well for these languages? I think that's super funny. <laughs> now, this is completely mind-blowing. This is a quick one, but it says countries that have never had a temperature above 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. This is crazy to me. And I also think of this deeper uh, as if, like, what if some of these people have never left their country? It's kind of mind-blowing that they have never experienced, like, close to a 100 degree Fahrenheit day. Or I guess like a 38 to 40 degree Celsius day, right? That's like really hot. I think that's pretty universal no matter who you are. If you're around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> you're feeling it. That is a hot day. And those are all too common here in the U.S. Uh, you know, the U.S. has a lot of different climates, sure. But when it comes to summer, man, pretty much anywhere north or south, you're, you're getting heat. You know, you get heat here from Florida to New Mexico and Arizona, all the way up to the Dakotas, all the way over to the East Coast, you know, Northeast Coast. It, it gets hot everywhere here at certain times of the year. And we had two, like, 99-degree, 100-degree days, depending on what thermometer you looked at. We had, like, two or three of them in a row a few weeks ago, even here in Illinois, and it was scorching hot. It was, like, unbelievable. I remember assuming before this channel that a lot of Europe didn't get, like, really hot. I don't know why I assumed that, but it's just an assumption I had. 
And in reality, you know, I'm a little bit of a weather nerd. I have taken a look at weather randomly sometimes, especially throughout summer over the years, these last year or two. And yeah, I know you guys have gotten some heat waves in different European countries pretty much all around. Yeah, I feel like this map is honestly pretty accurate. I also think it's crazy that Ireland's never had a day around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I just find that mind blowing. I know their climate is obviously more mild, but to think they've never had an anomaly, like not one day that was just very hot, it's kind of oppressive actually. This is how it pans out in Europe. Now, I wouldn't have really known, but I'm kind of surprised to see coffee is way uh, popular way up here. Uh, and then randomly in Luxembourg. <laughs> Luxembourg is like the coffee capital. You can barely see it on the map, but it's 25.1, whereas all its surrounding neighbors are around 4.9, 5.4, 6.1. So nowhere near the Luxembourg coffee consumption. Now, of course, this is per capita, and they're, I, I understand, a really small country, but still kind of alarming the difference there. Now, this one is super cool to me because I want to start learning languages. Um, you know, it's one thing I've slacked on, just like most Americans. You know, obviously, since uh, being married to my wife, you know, she speaks Spanish and French as well as English. So she's, you know, very language driven. And I've, you know, obviously think that's super cool and appreciate that. So being around her family, speaking a lot of Spanish, I have picked up a lot. So I like unofficially have learned so much to, you know, where I can have, you know, basic conversations, but I need to take and just learn it, the rest of it. So I, I can call myself like an actual, like somewhat Spanish speaker. Uh, and then, of course, I would like to learn something else, right? Completely new. And that's what I admire about learning since about Europeans is a lot of Europeans speak a lot of different languages. I think that's super cool. And unfortunately, that's a lot more rare over here in the U.S. This is this percentage of people that speak no foreign language. This is a little bit higher than I thought in some countries. Uh, but I still think these probably rate better than the U.S., I would guess. So, like... Some of the countries that don't really speak four languages would be like the UK. Obviously, they do have some people that speak four languages, but 65% around there don't really speak any four languages. And these are aged 25 to 64. France and Spain, a little bit higher than I would have guessed. Same with Italy. Then we go over here. I start to get confused when we look at the map. I think this is Romania, right? Uh, let's see. This is Ukraine. This is Poland. Uh, I want to say this is Serbia over here i guess they're not into speaking foreign languages either they're higher on this list but uh, everywhere kind of in the middle here and way up north y'all speak a bunch of languages because that percentage is amazingly low and then we'll end it with this one finally the average male height in 2022 throughout europe in centimeters take a look at this now i've always heard that the dutch are really tall consistent fact i've always heard so Anyone know why the Dutch are so damn tall? That's uh, pretty cool. Their average is way above pretty much anywhere else. I think that's fascinating that they can be that kind of that much different, even than neighboring countries. Uh, the Dutch, that they just must be eating something different up there, getting super tall. <laughs> and then one surprise, um, I, I think this is Bosnia, this flag. Bosnia and Herzegovina, they got some tall males as well. I mean, right on par, actually, with the Dutch. Uh, people be tall down here, man. That's crazy. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. These are always fun. I'd say these were actually pretty, like, funky and just fun maps anyway. They weren't, like, super serious or anything. Uh, but, yeah, I, I cannot wait to see in the comments. I hope you did enjoy this. I appreciate you watching. I hope your weekend is going to be great as well. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Until next time, y'all. I'll catch you later.